permutations and combinations. First of all, permutations. That is, the number of ways of ordering, with the important word being ordering. How many ways are there of ordering a group of objects? For instance, if you had eight objects, as we have there from the Planet Express team, how many ways are there of arranging them in a line, starting with any particular one first and then following that through? For the same way as in a race, if they were all in a race, how many ways are there of them arriving at the finishing line for the finishing order? Well, what have you got? Well, for the first one, there's eight of them, so you've got eight choices for the first one. So, we could pick, let's pick Leila. Leila. Leila can come in there. So we pick Leila. That only leaves seven left. So there's only seven choices now. Let's have Hermes. Six choices left. Dr. Zoidberg. Good choice. Five choices left now. Professor Farnsworth. Four choices left. Fry. Only three to choose from. Amy. Only two to choose from. B Nibbler. And then there's only one left. Last but not least, Bender. There'd be that number of ways of arranging eight objects in a line, or of a group of eight in a race for the finishing order. And if you were to multiply that lot out, that would then come to 40,320. There are 40,320 ways of arranging these eight objects. Now, this calculation though, it's quite lengthy to write that all out, to write 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It takes up quite a lot of space and quite a lot of time. Well, there's a quick piece of notation for this, which is the factorial operator. You can write that as 8 factorial. Factorial. So that in general, if I had n objects, n factorial would simply mean factorial. 8 factorial means start with 8, and then you multiply by 1 less each time, 1 less whole number each time until you arrive at 1. So n factorial would be n times the number before it, n minus 1, times the number 1 less than that before it again, n minus 2, all the way down to 1. So I'll put 2 times 1 for the end of it, n factorial. Right, so 8 factorial was 40,320. But what if you were only interested in the first three? How many permutations are there for places 1, 2 and 3 in the race? Well, put them back to the beginning. Then, how many ways are there of perming 3 from 8 objects? Well, same as before, there's still 8 ways of choosing who's going to come first. So anyone can come first. Along comes... Dr. Zoidberg. There was eight ways of choosing that. In second place, there's still seven left to choose from. In comes Professor Farnsworth. And in last place, there's still six to choose from. In comes Bendar. Six. That would be the number of ways of perming three from eight objects. Now, the way you would write that down is this. I would say 8p3, meaning... The number of ways of ordering just three from a group of eight objects. So what have we got here then? So 8p3 would be just 8 times 7 times 6, which when you multiply it out is 336. In other words, there's 336 ways of choosing the first three places in a race. But how could you write this using the factorial notation? Well, that means I want 8p3. Well, I've got part of it in the top there. That's part of 8 factorial, so I'll put 8 factorial down. And what's missing from 8 factorial is the 5 downwards. That's the 5 factorial parts missing. So that's like 8 factorial divided by the 5 factorial. The 5 factorial cancelling out the remaining factors. But I'd rather these numbers reflected the numbers in this expression here. So instead of writing 5 factorial, I think I'll write 8 factorial over, and that 5 arrived from 8 take away 3. So I've got 8 factorial over 8 minus 3 factorial. Or, to put it in the general term, if I've got NPR, <coughs> how many ways are there of ordering R objects from a group of N, then that would be N factorial over N minus R factorial. So that's the first part. 
that would be the formula for permutations. The number of ways of ordering a certain number from a group. But what if it wasn't a race, a final race for medals? What if it was just a qualification race? So that you just wanted the first three to then go on and do something else. So that in other words, the actual order in which they finished didn't matter. As long as I had the same group. The same group of three. Well that means there wouldn't be 336 groups. Because these three here can be arranged in six different ways. Because out of the three of them, out of the three of them, I've got a choice of three to go into the first place. That leaves two for the second place, and then just one. So that's three times two times one is six. So that means there'd be six times too many groups here, since that group can form six groups just within itself. Now that's the next part. That's the combinations where the order doesn't matter and it's just the selection of the three of them that matter. So next part. And so combinations where the order doesn't matter. In other words, combinations are the number of ways of selecting a group of objects from a larger set. Of course, I could include the whole set itself. Right, so back to this case then, where there were eight objects. There's eight objects, and I want to select a group, any group of three of them. So, selecting three from a group of eight objects. Now, as before, there was eight of them, so there's eight ways of choosing the first one. Well, let's have good old Dr. Zoidberg. There's eight ways of choosing the first one. There are seven left over to choose from. Well, let's have Leela. And finally, for the last one, we well have Amy. There we go, six. There's eight ways of choosing the first one, seven ways of the second one, and six ways of choosing the third one. Now, if the order doesn't matter, that means this group is going to appear several times out of this permutation. That Permutation was what? 336. There was 336 groups you could make up where the order mattered. We already had, if there were three groups, if there were three in a group, then there's six ways of arranging them. Which means that the number of ways that I want, which I would write down this way, 8C3, the number of combinations of three objects from 8 would be 336, because that includes the same group over and over again six times. Six ways of arranging this. Three ways for the first, two ways for the second, one for the last, would actually be that divided by six. Or if you like, it would be that, the number of ways of choosing the first three, divided by the arrangements of the first three, which would be three times two times one. And when you divide by six, that's going to come out to just 56. There are 56 different groups you could make up from that. Right, now, who can we write this down? as a formula. Well, that was the start of 8 factorial. It was just the 5 part that was missing. That part is a 3 factorial, so I've got a 3 factorial. The part that was missing was the 5 factorial. I could put 5 factorial, but I want it in terms of these two parts, so that would be the 8 take away 3 to produce the 5. 8 take away 3 factorial. Notice the way it goes. 3 factorial, 5 factorial, they still add up to 8. Although then for the general formula, N, C, R, how many ways are there of choosing a group of R objects from a set of N objects? That would be N factorial over R factorial times the balance of it, N minus R factorial. That being the formula for combinations. So the formula for combinations, the formal formula. Of course, the other way of working out would be if I wanted something like 10C3, would be 10 times 9 times 8 over 3 times 2 times 1. And then that would give you 4, 3, 12, 120. But I want to stick with them. So, a couple more cases where n equals 8, so we can use this little crowd here. What happens when you've got a bigger number? What happens if I wanted to let, select something like 6 of them? What about 8C6? Now I could use the formal formula, or I could just put that down this way. How many ways are there of choosing 6? Well, that would be 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 all over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 
times 1. But notice, all of these factors are the same. 6543 is 6543. That actually turns out to be the same as 8 times 7 over 2 times 1, which would be the pattern for selecting 2 from 8. That would be 8C2. And it is, of course, because in deciding which 6 to choose, that's effectively the same as saying, which 2 will I leave out? And it would be simpler to do that when the numbers are large. Go for the smaller combination. So that would just be 8C2. For 7s, 28. There'd be 28 ways of selecting a group of 6. Or the same, there'd be 28 ways of selecting 2 to leave out. Step further, 8C7. Well, I know I don't need to put the big combination down. The number of ways of choosing seven, a group of seven of them, is the same as deciding who will I leave out. Now there's only eight choices for who you're going to leave out, so that must come to eight. Or 8C8. How many ways are there of choosing eight out of eight? Well, that's easy. You take them all. There's only one way to take the whole lot. That must equal one. But that must mean then that that's the same as saying what's 8C8? Zero. In other words, how many ways are of choosing? None of them. So that must also be one. Now, the zero, if I was to follow that same pattern, I'd be tempted to have a one at the bottom of this and a zero at the bottom of that, which I can't really have. I'll have to go back to the formula for that to see what exactly happens there. So if 8C8 is one, using the formula strictly, that means 8 factorial over 8 factorial times 8 minus 8 over 0 factorial should be 1. The same way as choosing none of them, 8 factorial over 0 factorial over n minus 0 over 8 factorial. Now the only way that that can work would be if we define 0 factorial must equal 1. So, how many ways are there of choosing none of them? 1. Which is the same as saying, how many ways are there of being alone? 1. There's only one way to be alone, have nobody there. So, to do a bigger combination, what about the lottery? Bender would be interested in this. Oh, you're going to have a wee look at this. And Professor Farnsworth, come and explain this. Well, in the lottery, there are 49 numbers, but you only get to choose six of them. So that means the total number of combinations, because it doesn't matter which order these numbers appear, it only matters which six you've actually got, would be this, 49C6. So you could either use the function in your calculator, 49C6, or you could write it what that means. It would be 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 times 45, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 44, over 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. You can work that out, sometimes bits cancel, it's not very helpful because that's a big number. So you just put that into your calculator, you end up with the number 13,983,816. There's 13 million, well 14 million ways of selecting six numbers, not ordering six numbers. If it was, if it mattered which order the balls came out of the machine in for those six numbers, then you'd be looking at 49P6, which would be considerably more. 49P6 would be 49 factorial over 49 minus 6 factorial, or you could just put it in to your calculators that, but that comes out as 10 billion and 68 million 347,520. Considerably more, but the order doesn't matter. They appear that way when they come out of the machine, but it's only the six selections that you want. So, combinations, that's the way they work. And of course he's not interested anymore, because the chances of that are very, very slim. Right, an actual example then. So, that's all question then. In a class of 30, there were 18 girls and 12 boys. Ooh. And you had to select a group of six, which maintains the same ratio of girls and boys. So the first bit then would be, what is that ratio? Well, the ratio is going to be 18 to 12, 
cancelling that down, that's going to be 6 into them both, 3 to 2. Now that's not going to be an exact number, so that's what it says, which best maintains the ratio. So it's going to be 3 fifths of the group, which have to be girls. So that means 3 fifths of the 6. Now 3 fifths of the 6 isn't exact, that's 18 upon 5, so that's 3 and 3 fifths, which have to be girls. And 2 fifths of the group, 2 fifths of the 6, which would be 12 upon 5, which would be 2 and 2 thirds, 2 and 2 fifths, would have to be boys. That's a bit messy there. Which means, since I've got to choose exact numbers, and I just have to go by the arithmetic, that would have to be 4 girls and 2 boys. So what the question says is this then. How many ways are there of choosing a group from 30, comprising 18 girls and 12 boys, choosing a group of 4 girls from the 18 girls, and two boys from the 12 boys. Well, that would be this then. The number that I'd be looking for, for would be this. Choosing four from 18 would be 18C4. And for each of those selections, however many there are, there would be a group choosing two from 12. That would be 12C2. So it's the product of the two of those, not the sum of the two. Because for every grouping here, I've got all the alternative possibilities of these. Then you go to the next grouping, and against them you've got all the possible alternatives of these. It's the product of the two. Which you just put, you could put that straight into a calculator, or I could spell it out just for a bit to remind you. Four groups, ways of choosing a group of four from 18. 18 ways of choosing the first one. 17 left to choose for the second place, 13 left to choose, sorry, 16 left for the next place, and then 15, but the order doesn't matter. So divide out the total number of permutations of orderings of 4. So divide by 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. But you could just put that number into a calculator. Times, how many ways of selecting 2 from 12? Well, there's 12 ways of choosing the first one, and 11 ways of choosing the second one. But the order doesn't matter. So divide out the number of ways of ordering two objects. That's two times one. That part on its own, we've already worked it out, is 3060. This part on its own, well you can just get it straight from the calculator, is 66. Which means the total number of ways of forming a group of six that best represents this class of 30, maintaining the ratio of boys and girls, will be 3060 times 66, which is 201,960. Quite a number of ways. So in fact, if you had your class of 30 and you wanted to take out a different group of 6 every day, it would actually take you 553 years to take them all.